Cat Tales 37 At the age of four I was a normal little girl who loved animals and wished more than anything for a small, furry friend to keep me company. When I would ask for a kitten, my parents would always cite my father's allergies as the reason I could not have a cat. No kittens for Sarah on her birthday. No kittens for Christmas. No kittens at all. That didn't stop me from asking. Frequently. Every holiday that children are given presents, I asked for a cat. The tension in our house was pretty high. My parents were always arguing about something. Even so young, I had enough friends at daycare whose parents were separated to see what was coming. I don't remember the talk my mother had with me the day my dad moved out, but she has told the story a thousand times. With great dread, my mom sat me down to explain why my dad would be living in another house. She had her speech prepared, all the things she would say to mend a daddy's girl's heart. Before she could utter a word, I looked up at her with my dark eyes, she'd later decide the look was calculating, and asked her, are you and daddy getting divorced? She nodded, stammering a, why, yes, and throwing up a silent thank you to an overpopulated daycare and a sudden surge in Spokane's divorce rate. Without hesitation, as if I'd been planning for this moment for all four years of my life, I made an offer. Can I get a cat now? She sat there dumbfounded for a moment and secretly proud of her daughter's bartering skills. Thrilled not to have to pick her way through the minefield of that conversation, she quickly agreed. The bargain was struck. I was to have my heart's greatest desire. That is a grand thing for a little girl. For the next few days it was all I could talk about, all I could think about. I was getting a cat. Me. I told everyone at daycare. I told everyone in line at the grocery store. I told anyone who would look at me for longer than two seconds that I was getting the kitten I'd always wanted my whole life. I remember people smiling at me a lot. The big day came with much fanfare. I leapt out of my brand new big girl bed, ran down the hall, and pounced on my poor sleeping mother. After breakfast, she loaded me into the little gray car, and we drove to a ranch-style house. The house I remember quite clearly, probably because I thought, even then, that it was ugly. It was small and salmon-colored with dark green trim, tiny windows, and too many shrubs in the front. It struck me as a dark place. I don't remember any small talk, although I'm sure there was some. I don't remember what the mother looked like or much about her two kids, who were down the hall playing with a kitten and a bit of string. The mother cat, if I remember correctly, was a calico. Very pretty and very watchful, she was sprawled on the floor in a lazy sea, but her eyes were fixed intently on me, her tail flicking as she appraised me. Sitting next to her, almost as if waiting for permission to say hello, was the last available kitten. The cautious kitten was a sleek black with a white throat, chest, and belly, and four little white paws, like the rain boots in my closet. Her face was solid black, with not a trace of white. Her green eyes stared up at me, and my heart was hers. She was shy and timid as she took those first tentative steps toward me. She looked as out of place in that house as I felt in my own life. We were perfect for each other. On the drive home, as I held the tiny, mewling thing close to my chest, I named her Boots. We were a lot alike, Boots and I. We were content with each other, full of love. She followed me around all day and slept at my feet every night. She became my constant when life was unpredictable. I did my best to be hers, too, always ready with a bit of string when she was playful or a chin rub when she wasn't. I could tell her anything, and she wouldn't judge me or contradict me. She could bring me mice and moles and not get scolded. We understood each other. We were inseparable. For her whole life, Boots was the best friend a girl could ever ask for.